In today's video, I am so excited to share with all of you an updated summer 2020, what I eat in a day. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jessica and here on my channel, we focus on all things mom life. So whether that's cooking, cleaning, or organizing and finding effective and efficient ways to take care of our family, but everything we do in my space does have a bit of a healthy twist as I'm a holistic nutritionist and a nutritional practitioner. So if that sounds like something that you might be interested in, I would love it if you would take two seconds, open up the description box down below and hit the big red subscribe button. That way you don't miss a single video. Over the last couple months, I've talked and shared a lot on Instagram that I've been making some dietary changes that have been really focused on hormone healing and I was getting asked on a daily basis if I would make an updated what I eat in a day video. So today is that day. Additionally, I am thrilled to share that this video is actually in collaboration with one of my dearest friends that I have met in the last year to year and a half, and that is Mrs. Jen Frick. I love Jen so much. Her and her beautiful family are truly such a light and inspiration in this internet space. She and I clicked immediately and became the dearest friends over the last year. So if you aren't familiar with Jen, I highly encourage you to check out her video after you watch this one today. I will be sure to have her video linked in the description box down below. She's also doing a what I eat in a day. She's been doing a detox over the last couple weeks and months to kind of reset her body and keep things light and fresh throughout the summertime. So I think that you will also will enjoy her recipes as well. So think of these two videos as a great hub and inspiration for some light, fresh eating that's really gonna pack a nutritional punch. And if you're new here from Jen's channel, hi, thank you so much. I hope that you enjoy the recipes and that you consider subscribing. All right, let's get our morning started with nothing other than a green smoothie. And this one is actually a refreshing mojito smoothie. So because it's summer, I'm craving all the summer flavors and to be honest with you, cocktails. So I've recreated a delicious and nourishing mojito smoothie. So let's get to blending and I hope you enjoy. When I talked quite a bit about how I've been changing my diet over the last couple weeks, the questions came flooding in. So I thought that we would go through it in a bit more detail in today's video. So my approach currently is emphasizing on the importance of small but very sustainable lifestyle changes to help heal and work alongside my hormones. So for many of you who followed me for a very long time, know that essentially over the last five years, I've either been A, pregnant, nursing, I had a year off in between, then I got pregnant with Sawyer, then I exclusively nursed her for 22 months. So since February, I've been working on really getting my body and my hormones back in alignment. And I've been doing that by consuming 20 different veggies a week. Now, I know this sounds like a tall order, but when you challenge yourself to start thinking about, well, the veggies blended in your smoothie or any veggies that may be chopped herbs or in a salad, and even those that may be in some homemade red sauce, you could be consuming a larger variety than you think, but the variety that I put on my plate has been very important to me in addition to doing things like eating a high fiber and protein diet that is full of greens. I have felt amazing over the last six weeks since I've made some of these adjustments and changes, and I hope that these recipes will help inspire you as well. And for those who followed me for a long time as well, you know I call my smoothies my insurance policy for both me and my kids. It's the easiest way to pack in a ton of greens in the morning. So I like to start the day off with a fat, a fiber, and a protein to help balance my blood sugar and decrease sugar cravings throughout the day. And to be honest with you, I just like to have breakfast that's quick and easy and on the go. So this is a coconut mint mojito green smoothie. And for all of the recipes that I'm sharing with you guys today, be sure to hit the description box down below as I will have everything linked for you down there for you to recreate in your kitchen and enjoy at home. For lunch, I'm throwing together one of my favorite wraps and it's a collard green wrap. I've been using collard green wraps since 
probably 2009 in place of sandwich wraps again because it was just such an easy way for me to add in some extra greens when I was in a rush and I worked out of the home. I would pack these all the time to bring to the office with me, but they store beautifully and it's something that you can actually make ahead of time. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be roasting some vegetables and then I have some chicken breast left over in my fridge that I'm also going to just be popping on a baking sheet to reheat to add into this collard wrap. It's so nutritious and so easy. And then I'm going to be topping it off with some sour sauerkraut and avocado. The thing with wraps that you buy at a deli or out of the house is that they can have a ton of salad dressing in them. And dressings, as we all know, can really break the health factor of your wrap or salad. As a result, we need to be on the lookout for the sugar and the bad oils and fats that can be in these dressings because it can really just wreck all of the nutritional benefits that you're hoping to gain. So that's why I like to just top it with a little bit of sauerkraut and avocado, and then there's actually no need to include any dressing at all. Also adding in fresh herbs is so important. I like to add in adobo seasoning, some garlic, some pepper, and then once the wrap is fully done, I sprinkle some kelp on top of it. Kelp is such an excellent source of vegetable protein, dietary fiber, calcium, iron, potassium, magnesium, phosphorus, vitamins, antioxidants, iodine, amongst a lot of other trace minerals. So throwing this on top of your lunch wrap is something that will boost your energy so you avoid that 3 p.m. crash. Consuming greens like spinach, kale, and collard greens and Swiss chard we all know that these foods are loaded with antioxidants and can help prevent inflammation. However, leafy greens can also reduce stress, thereby they lower our cortisol levels and help us balance our estrogen. So for somebody like me who's really focusing on a hormone-rich diet, and especially being a mom right now or a human right now amidst this crisis that we're dealing with, anything I can do and consume in eat to help with my stress levels is highly important. Also, I know that adding avocado and fats is something that sometimes people avoid, but including high quality natural fats into your diet can not only help curb your appetite, but also our insulin resistance. We all know that studies show that consuming healthy fat at meals can trigger the release of a hormone that makes you feel more satisfied and thus you eat less. And not to mention avocados are loaded with nutrition that can positively affect our blood cholesterol levels and help balance those cortisol levels. So within avocados, it influences estrogen and progesterone, the two hormones that are actually responsible for regulating ovulation in menstrual cycles. Then I've added in some chicken breast, which is a high protein, low fat food. Also, it includes leptins, which are incredible for the anabolic hormones such as insulin and estrogen. So these are great things to include if you're looking for a hormone focused diet. For dinner, we're putting together a jicama cabbage salad that has lime, mint, and some Granny Smith apples in it. And it is so delicious and satisfying and not to mention refreshing, which is great for those warmer months like it is here in Michigan. It's July and it's 90 degrees. So this is something that I'm definitely craving. This is inspired by a salad I had at my girlfriend's house last summer that I fell in love with, but I've switched it up a little bit to add in a few more fibrous vegetables. So I'm chopping up some jicama here, and this is definitely probably my favorite vegetable of the summer next to zucchini, which is a favorite all year long. So adding in cruciferous vegetables, we know like cabbage, is something that is extremely important because like leafy greens, these vegetables also help to process and remove excess estrogen from the body. So it's also worth noting that high calcium content in things like broccoli and cabbage can aid in PMS relief by reducing cramps and bloating as well as regulating our mood swings. So I like to go really veggie and protein heavy at dinner to help turn off the fat storage pathways while I sleep. In addition to that, I'm pairing all of these beautiful vegetables with vitamin C and the lime. And several studies have found that 
high levels of vitamin C help provide stress relief. So once in a double blind study in 2017, it said that vitamin C reduced stress levels in participants by taking 500 milligrams a day by 50%. So if we could just add in an extra lemon or an extra lime throughout our day, in addition to our vitamin C supplement, we could be well on our way to reducing our stress levels by 30 to 50%. So consider adding these vitamin rich nutrients to your meals, even if it's in something that you may not consider doing so. When my girlfriend made the salad similarly for me last summer, she had included tuna and it was delicious. However, if you wanna make this for a backyard barbecue, which would be a huge hit, you could even add in some chicken breast or better yet, make it easy on yourself and grab an organic rotisserie chicken from Whole Foods, chop that up and toss it in. So now I'm gonna be adding in the mint and this is what really makes the salad. I like to go extra heavy and to be honest with you on the second day, it does taste better because the mint and lime have had a chance to really soak into all the vegetables. But this is one area you don't wanna scale back on is the mint. If anything, you could kind of increase it more so than I have the half cup in the recipe. But you're just gonna be adding in the mint and the lime and that's it as far as the dressing goes. It's so simple and easy, but it's so refreshing. This was one of those salads that Sawyer devoured and one that I would wanna grab a little dish full throughout the day as a snack because it was just so refreshing and satisfying to have. So while I know many of us breeze right past the fresh herbs at the grocery store, remember how we talked about eating 20 different plants per week? Well, adding fresh herbs is a great way to reach that goal. In addition, eating things like mint is so nutritious. So the content of mint is actually thought to reduce the effects of oxidative stress on the body and mint consumption may prevent and treat many conditions and diseases such as PCOS, which is super common in female fertility and infertility issues. Mint can also aid in digestion. It can be used to relieve IBS. It can be used to relieve tension headaches. It's also a great source of vitamins and minerals, and it's a wonderful way to add a flavor to your drinks. Lately, I've been loving eating fresh coconut yogurt with some berries, mints, flax seeds, and zen basil seeds, and I have been absolutely loving that as a sweet treat at night. I want to thank you all so much for watching and if you liked this video you can let me know by giving it a big thumbs up and then again if you enjoy this sort of content the subscribe button is right over here on the screen now you can give that a click that way you don't miss a single video i hope to see you back here next thursday and i hope that you give jen's video a watch give it a thumbs up and then in the comments be sure to let her know that i sent you her way thank you again for stopping by and i hope to see you back here next thursday